At the end of the last video, we stated that to identify a good electrophile, we really need to focus on the nature of the leaving group. And in this video, we're going to answer the question, what makes a good leaving group in a very concrete way? I'm actually going to give you a number that allows you to distinguish between good and bad leaving groups. That said, the conceptual foundation of this number is the analogy between a Bronsted acid base process involving the transfer of a proton and nucleophilic substitution, which is the Lewis analog involving a Lewis base, the nucleophile, and a Lewis acid, the electrophile. The key here is recognizing that from the leaving group's perspective, the same species is generated in the products. In both cases, we're seeing X minus on the product side here. Good leaving groups are those for which X minus is a stable molecule in the thermodynamic sense. Thanks to the conjugate seesaw, we know that if X minus is a stable molecule, then HX, its conjugate acid, must be acidic. And in particular, for X to be a viable leaving group, it's necessary that the acid HX be very acidic on the level of a strong acid. We'll deepen and quantify this idea in the remainder of this video. In a nucleophilic substitution reaction, the leaving group or nucleophuge departs with a pair of electrons. The nucleophile donates a pair of electrons to R, the electrophile, and either simultaneously or in a different elementary step, the leaving group departs with a pair of electrons. This electron flow is identical to the electron flow in a Bronsted acid-base process. The only difference is that the electrophilic atom R has been replaced with H so that a proton is transferred rather than an electrophilic group R. If X minus is a stable molecule due to some concrete stability factor like resonance delocalization, electronegativity, or even hybridization, then we can conclude that X is a good leaving group. And the natural question here is, how stable does X minus have to be? Well, the answer is provided by the theory of Bronsted acidity and basicity. Imagine we thought about the specific reaction where the nucleophile was H2O. That would mean that the product here, H nu, would be hydronium ion, H3O plus. We know how to think about and how to write and how to quantify the favorability of this process. The favorability of this process is captured by its equilibrium constant, which is not any old equilibrium constant. It's Ka. And typically, if Hx is a weak acid, this process is reversible with considerable back reaction occurring. The only situation in which the reaction is not reversible is one in which Ka is much, much greater than 1, or in the language of pKa with the negative log of Ka being considered. The situation is that pKa must be less than zero. This implies that Ka is then greater than one, and that back reaction of X minus to form Hx is essentially negligible. This quantitative expression, that pKa is less than zero for good leaving groups, is equivalent to the qualitative expression in the text above. Good leaving groups are the conjugate basis of strong acids, where here, strong acid has a very clear definition, those acids with pKa less than zero. If you haven't thought about this before, go back and look at the list of strong acids from Chem 1211 and 1212. You'll notice that all of them have pKa values that are less than zero. Let's look now at a few practical examples of good leaving groups. Alkyl bromides are great electrophiles because bromine is a great leaving group. Why? Because the conjugate acid of bromide, the molecule generated when Br departs with a pair of electrons, is HBr. That's a strong acid. The situation is exactly analogous for RCl, which is also a great electrophile because the conjugate acid of chloride, HCl, is again a strong acid. Let's say it one more time for kicks and gigs. Alkyl iodides are great electrophiles as well because the conjugate acid of iodide, HI, is a strong acid. Before looking at other examples, you should notice that there's an alkyl halide that's missing from this list, and this may have been nagging at you since we defined the electrophile in the first video of this series. RF is apparently not a good electrophile, and F- minus appears not to be a good leaving group. What's going on here? Well, consider the conjugate acid of fluoride, F-, minus, HF. HF is a weak acid. 
its pKa is not less than zero. For that reason, Rf is not a good electrophile and F minus is not a good leaving group. This is at least a quantitative expression of that idea. Sulfonates are good leaving groups because the conjugate acid of a sulfonate, which I'll draw out in full here, is analogous to sulfuric acid and is a strong acid because of the massive resonance stabilization that comes along with deprotonating here. The negative charge is spread out over all three oxygens in a sulfonate anion. And finally, just to draw your attention to a positively charged leaving group, OR2 plus here is a good leaving group because the conjugate acid of OR2, something like HOR2 plus, is a strong acid. Finally, let's take a brief look at the alkyl sulfonates. You're going to want to get familiar with sulfonate as a good leaving group. Sulfonates are referred to as pseudohalides because they act like halide anions, essentially. They want to accept a pair of electrons, just like a halogen does within an organic structure. The sulfonate portion of the molecule, that is, the oxygen linked to sulfur, which bears two oxygens and a carbon group, R', prime, is a good leaving group in these molecules. Here's an example of ethyl methane sulfonate, also called ethyl mesylate. The methane piece of this name comes from the fact that sulfur is bound to a methyl group. This isn't the electrophilic carbon. The electrophilic carbon is connected to oxygen, not to sulfur. And this entire bit that I'm highlighting in blue is the sulfonate leaving group. This is also called ethyl mesylate, and you'll see mesylate abbreviated MS. This molecule is mesic acid. And just to prove to you that mesylate is a good leaving group, I'll tell you that the pKa for mesic acid is about negative 1.9 below our threshold for good leaving groups of a pKa of zero. Paratoluene sulfonate, or more commonly tosylate, is another example of a very common sulfonate. The paratoluene part of the name comes from the paratolo group in the structure. This is the carbon group connected to sulfur. Again, this isn't the electrophilic portion of the molecule. It just rides along with, with the sulfur. The electrophilic carbon is the one connected to oxygen and the entire fragment I'm highlighting in blue is the departing leaving group. The tosylate group is commonly abbreviated as OTS. The conjugate acid of tosylate, which is commonly known as tosic acid or paratoluene sulfonic acid, is a strong acid, as it must be for sulfonate to be a good leaving group, and its pKa is about negative 2.8, slightly more acidic than the methane sulfonate molecule. There's actually a good reason for that that has to do with the nature of this carbon versus the methyl carbon. I'll let you think that one through. And finally, the granddaddy of sulfonates, the most reactive sulfonate by far, is trifluoromethyl sulfonate with a CF3 alkyl group connected to sulfur. This is the source of the trifluoromethyl or triflate for the entire sulfonate ion name here. Once again, the carbon bearing the fluorines is not the electrophilic carbon here. The electrophilic carbon is connected to oxygen, and the leaving group in this case is all of the atoms that I'm highlighting here. This is the sulfonate portion that departs as a leaving group. Triflate is commonly abbreviated using the abbreviation TF, and triflic acid, the conjugate acid of the triflate or trifluoromethyl sulfonate anion, is one of the strongest acids in common use in organic chemistry. It has a staggeringly negative pKa of about negative 14.7. And again, it's not difficult to understand why triflic acid is so acidic if we focus our attention on the differences structurally between CF3, the tosyl group, and the methyl group.